We all love referrals, right? It feels great when others are talking about our businesses and spreading the word about our services, and we should strive to get more referrals. However, relying solely on those referrals to grow our businesses without diversifying our marketing efforts can have a huge impact on our businesses. And that's exactly what happened to Katie Doss. I lost 70% of my clients, 70% of my income, 70% of my business. Like it was just, I, I lost it all. Hi, I'm Lindsay Berta, founder of Berta Marketing, a marketing agency designed specifically for small business owners where I handle all of your marketing so you can focus on what you love. So my guest today, I'm so excited to chat with her. She is a Google ads expert currently based in Colorado and working with clients all over the world. She has produced some amazing results for her clients and helping them grow their businesses through paid online advertising. And we've spoke a few times over the past year. And I recently attended a five-day Google ads boot camp that she put on. And I was very impressed with her professionalism, her knowledge, and she was very informative and educational. And through all of this, I also learned something about her own small business journey. And I knew right away that I had to have her on to talk about it. So today I'm chatting with Katie Doss. So hi, Katie. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi. Yes. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. So happy to be here today on your podcast. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I recently started this podcast. And so I'm so happy to have someone like you on um, today. Um, I feel like we are in complementary fields. And I think that our clients and, and audiences can really benefit from your story that I want to share today. So I already know a little bit about how you got started, but I'd love for you to share a bit about yourself, how you got started in this space, you know, helping small businesses with ads and what you currently do to help your clients. Yeah, that, yeah, it's a long story. So I'll try yes. to keep it short and brief. Hey, go ahead. Um, talk away. <laughs> okay. So I have been on my Google ads journey for about five years now. It absolutely started at the beginning, just doing everything in marketing. Um, and yeah. I'm sure we've all been there, you know, as marketers offering content creation, paid services, website development. And I will say eventually I landed on Google ads. Mm -hmm. Um, but right after college, I graduated. And of course I'm one of those people that studied communications and I have doing nothing with my (laughs) degree, what I studied in college. So I am a self-taught marketer. Nice. yeah, I so studied how- communications as well. So oh, yes, <laughs> <That's> ironic. <laughs> yeah. I think it's great for overall, you know, communicating, speaking to right. people, even just building and running your own business. But didn't learn much about marketing. So yeah, yeah, very much in the dark. And when I graduated college, I actually started working with my mom's um, service business. So she owned a maid service, and yeah. she's owned it for over thirty years. So it's definitely something that she put wow. a lot of yes. time into. That is a okay. successful small business. 30 years is yes. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, she actually started it before she had me. And so it's oh, like, yeah. I always say that's like her first baby. Her yeah. first child. <laughs> right. And, you know, obviously she's very passionate about it and loves what she does. And so she was super happy to have her, you know, daughter come in and kind of take the reins on everything. Um, but of course she wasn't, she was almost pretty much ready to like take take, take a step back and not necessarily continue working in the business as much as she has. And so it was great for me to be able to come in and kind of figure out, essentially do everything in the business, but also figure out like what I wanted to focus on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I did customer service, sales, um, team management, did the cleaning as well. So also I know a little bit of a clean freak. So I love this portion. Me too. (laughs) Me too. Sounds like a dream. (laughs) Exactly. It's great. I got to do everything. Um, And essentially, you know, graduated college and was able to run a business, Um, of course, with her guidance. You know, she wasn't just like, hey, have fun. But when I started to get into marketing, I was like, oh, this is really interesting. Um, I started to learn more about what our agency did for us because, of course, she hired an agency that would do Facebook ads and Google ads. And I was just really interested. So I started to ask some more questions like, okay, you know, what very basic at the beginning, I was like, you know, what are you doing for us? Can I take a look at the account? And it was really off putting because Mm -hmm. they were just like, 
saying, no, you can't have access to your account. You have your monthly reports. That's it. And then there was also this like really big hierarchy. So it was like I had a account strategist who would refer to the paid ads expert manager and then would go to like the Google ads expert. So it took Mm. like days or sometimes weeks to get information. So it was just like one of those things. And I'm not saying every single agency is like this. This is just my mom's and my experience, what working right. with them. But it was like, I started to learn more about pay-per-click advertising so I could start to become more involved in these conversations. Mm-hmm. And of course, as I started to ask more questions, they were like, whoa, right? <laughs> like, why do you know so much? <laughs> right. And, you know, I could kind of tell, you know, a few months in, I'm like, okay, they're not actually delivering the results that they're saying that they're delivering. Yes. Um, especially the word conversion gets so misleading and just, mm-hmm. you don't really know what a conversion is because there's micro conversions and macro conversions. And it's like, well, what are you tracking? What are you optimizing for? So what I found out is they just weren't providing the results that they said they were. Right. Um, and then eventually I just learned Google ads, you know, did their certification, all that good stuff. And eventually we just said, okay, we're done. And we just ended the service with that. Um, this is something that agencies do a lot too, is that they keep your data and they keep your account. So I don't really know too much on the Facebook ad side or, you know, content Instagram, I would assume you would be able to keep it. But one of the big red flags with an agency and that if someone is looking to outsource to an agency, you need to ask, is this my data? If we end services, do I get to keep this account? Because yes. more than half will say, nope, that's my data or, you know, that's our data. <laughs> right. And I'm so right. Exactly. And I'm so glad, glad that you bring this up because, um, and of course I want you to finish, you know, telling, you know, this yeah. your story, but I want to touch on this too, is that that's one of the big reasons I started my own business to help small businesses was, Um, I was helping a lot of small business owners with their marketing and they started coming to us and they had been working with agencies and they would come to me saying like, I don't know what I'm paying for. I'm not really seeing any results. If I really want anything, I have to keep asking for it. Like they're not really doing what they said they would do. Now, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of great agencies out there, but I have come across a few who don't seem to be putting their clients' best interests first. I just don't think that's fair to the small business owner. You know, small businesses struggle enough, (laughs) right? They need someone in their corner that's going to really help them and get results for them. So I'm glad that you brought that up too. Yeah. I mean, these businesses are, like you said, small businesses that like every penny, every cent counts. And this isn't something where you're working with companies that have, you know, um, I was going to say trust funds. That's not the right word. Investors. There we go. So they can like funnel in millions of dollars. Like, no, these are small businesses that made their own way at their business sometimes from scratch. And so it's just, it is so disheartening to see all Mm -hmm. these other agencies. And I like that you said that too, and reiterated that, like I do work for other agencies as an independent consultant. Yes, me too. I make sure (laughs) that everything I said, they do like, they do not keep the account. Um, If we end services, they, the, the clients get direct access to me. So like, if they have a question, mm-hmm. they tell me there's no like hierarchy. There's no, yeah. Oh, you have to go to this person and then this person, and then maybe Katie will give you a response. It's like, no, they have my email. And if they have a question, they email right. me. And I respond. Yeah. So I'm very picky with the agencies that I only work with two right now because there's not that many. Right. Right. <laughs> that, you know, <laughs> actually want to help build small businesses. So. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And so, and yeah, so um, that's so awesome that you have that family connection too, because that really shows the passion too, that you have for helping and everything. So, so what is it then that had, like, how do you currently help your clients? Definitely. So I have two different ways and this kind of goes into what I've done to build up my business over the last five years. And the biggest thing is just doing full service account management because Google ads can be scary. Google ads can be something that, you know, your competitors are all running and you're like, Oh, I'm interested. I'm not sure how to even get started in it. Um, But I see, you know, if I type, type something into Google and I see my competitors show up, like I want to get in on that, but people don't know how to. And so first, my first biggest offering is to just do full service management. So 
again, going back to, they have full control over the account. So I have my clients set up the account so they know it's always in their name and their control. And then I go through and just set up everything for them and manage it for them. Mm -hmm. That's going to be one of the services where people are like, nope, you have fun. <laughs> I have other things <laughs> to worry about. Right, right. Um, and then, you know, the one thing I've recently had a transition to during the pandemic was actually coaching um, businesses yeah, yeah. on how to run their own Google ads. So that was something that is a newfound um, avenue that I found for, you know, helping small businesses. If yeah. first off, they can't afford my services, or maybe they just really want to do it on their own if they really enjoy digital marketing and they want to get into this. So that's been another offering that I've been working on the last year um, since the pandemic hit to be able to still help yeah. small businesses if they couldn't afford my services. Yeah, that's fantastic. I know you and I, we sound very similar because that's how kind of I work mine as well is I will help small, like they can outsource everything to me so they don't have to worry about it, right? They can spend the time on doing what they need to do. And then, you know, other, like I call them the smaller small businesses that want to kind of have their hands on everything else or can't yet afford to outsource everything. So, you know, they can just do a consultation with me, things like that to kind of learn how to DIY all this stuff themselves. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. That, and that's pretty much what it is. It's DIY. Yeah. Doing, yeah. You know, yeah. So oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So, and then also you, so you bring up the pandemic. So now this is, this is one of the main reasons I reached out to you and, um, to, to do this podcast with me and share this part of your story. Um, because I learned something about your small business journey through one of your email blasts that you sent out actually, which your email blasts are really great, by the way. Um, <laughs> but, it, <laughs> but it's something that I talk about all the time. I talk about it in all of my content and it's something I want small businesses to be aware of. Um, and when I learned this happened to you, I was like, okay, we need to share this part of your story, um, with the small business community to help them avoid it as well. So I want you to tell me kind of a bit about this major moment that happened and how you turned things around for your business. Yeah. So as I said, you know, kind of during the pandemic, my business took a little bit of a hit. Um, I was simply relying on referrals and I'm so thankful that I could rely on referrals and I didn't really have to think about anything else. Um, but when businesses take a hit and this is for all businesses, one of the first things they do cut is marketing most of the time, especially paid marketing. Uh, and of course my niche is working with service-based businesses, um, especially location-based businesses. <laughs> right. And when the pandemic hit, as you can imagine, they were all closed. They were all shut down. So this was something where we couldn't even begin to think about running ads because they were not even offering their service. So I lost 70% of my clients, 70% of my income, 70% of wow. my business. Like it was just, I, I lost it all. And so you had to be like freaking out. Yeah. I mean, mean a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, and thankfully I, I did diversify and that's my number one thing that I recommend to every business is diversify in, in something at least. And for me, it was not my marketing um, or my lead generation that I was diversifying, but I was diversifying my businesses that I work with. So I had a few e-commerce right. businesses. Um, at the time, one of them was a grocery store. So thankfully I was working with them because of course the grocery stores, you know, oh, their, yeah. um, they, their what income, their revenue, everything flew up because people were just buying things off the shelf. So mm -hmm. that was like the one business that could be a <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Um, but definitely always make sure you diversify because especially when it comes to marketing and just omni-channel marketing. Again, I was refl relying on referrals and I lost all my lead generation sources because, you know, service-based businesses, you know, just couldn't refer anyone else and no one was looking for service marketing at the time. And so with that, again, going back to just trying to help the small businesses as much as they could during the pandemic, I was like, I know you can't afford my services. There's no point in even turning on ads right now, but how about I start coaching you on Google ads so that by the time you can start and turn on your, your marketing again, you'll have some sort of way to DIY your service, to yeah. DIY your Google ads. So Mark. you're, yeah. And so I'm still making a little bit of money, you know, <laughs> not yeah, yeah. A lot, but <laughs> still a way to keep that connection. And I have had a client now that I've worked with for three years that um, they are an Italian travel agency company. So you can imagine wow. the impact wow. of the pandemic on them. Yeah. And we're doing better than ever now because I never stopped working with them, even though they couldn't afford my full service management. I still 
found a way to help them. And just, they stayed with me, you know, it's just one of those things that like, he was so thankful for me just trying to be there for him. And of course, because I've been with working with him. So for long, it was one of those things I was like, I can't just, you can't pay me. So I'm going to end the service. So it, right. You, you build that relationship. You can't yeah. just be like, nope, bye. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it was, one of those things, it was just like, I, I have to keep working with them. And so that was agreed. And even now we're back to spending the amount that we were spending pre COVID. And so it's one oh, of those nice. things that, yeah, it, it just turned out really well. And I've had a lot of clients either come back or, um, you know, come to me and say, okay, I'm ready to learn Google ads and take it on my own. So it was definitely a big eye opener for me, realizing that I could also coach Google ads. So again, yeah. thinking about that thinking about that diversity, not only could I offer it as a service, but I could also coach businesses and entrepreneurs. And so that's where I started my Instagram account. So again, diversifying nice. my marketing now, <laughs> started my Instagram account, as you know, started my email list. Yeah. Um, I'm doing Facebook ads now. And so just being able to bring in leads other ways and simply just referrals and it's been right. a game changer and I would, I would never go back to simply right? referrals. just being referrals. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's, I just, when I read that, cause I know you sent this story out in an email blast and I was like, oh gosh, this is what I talk about all the time where referrals, I don't want people to think I'm anti-referral because they're amazing. If yes. people are talking about you, that is fantastic. Mm-hmm. You know, and there, there's, you know, word of mouth marketing. It's great. But like you said, you don't want to rely on that solely because you know, that could it could fizzle out. And especially depending on what you do, word of mouth referrals can be, um, can be harder sometimes as well. So to make sure that you're diversifying and you're showing up online, offline, um, you know, keeping in touch with current clients, keeping in touch with prospects, you know, there's just so many things you should be doing so that, you know, when something major happens, you're like, okay, this part's okay. You know, I can rely on this over here. Uh, mm-hmm. it's kind of like when Facebook shut down for a couple of days yes. <laughs> or a couple of days, a couple hours, a couple of days, oh my God, the world would have ended, but, um, <laughs> so you gotta think about it too. Like if yeah. you have all your clients, you're not even clients, but your audience is on Instagram and then, you know, tomorrow Instagram dies and disappears and you don't have an email list. Maybe you're not on yeah. TikTok, wherever your audience is or Google ads. It's like your audience is gone. Your business is gone. It's gone. And yes. Yeah, yeah. So I, so it's like when that happened, I'm, I was like, oh man, I can't, I was trying to do stuff for clients and I couldn't do stuff for them. Cause I work with a lot of their social media accounts. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, okay, well, okay, whatever. We'll just set that aside for now. There's other things to be done. There's blogs to be written. There's email lists to send out. So it wasn't the end of the world. Yeah. <laughs> we want to have that backup plan. Um, cause we can't predict if Facebook or Instagram are going to go down again, or, you know, yeah. the pandemic tur- comes back in and we have to shut down right. again. So it's like, there's these things that for, again, me, it worked for the last five years. I was fine off of referrals, but then there right. was something big that happened and lost. And there you go. Business. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. And it's kind of like, I'm sure we're all guilty of doing all kinds of things that we don't realize or can't see. Mm -hmm. until something like that happens, because if it's working, it's working. Right. But it's always best to be prepared. And, and also it's nice to know that you or I, or whoever, when you're doing ads, when you're doing other marketing, that you're in control of that, Mm -hmm. like you're in control of all of that. You can monitor what's working and what's not working. You know, when it comes to just referrals, you're really relying on your clients to do that for you. Mm -hmm. And you don't really have that control. So Absolutely. You can't, you know, weed people out. You can't uh, pre-screen people. It's just like, Hey, I have someone here you go. You have to take their word for it that, you know, they're also, they align with your business values and that everything. And maybe they don't, but it's like, you're going to have to take a little bit more time to weed through that versus with just yes. in general, you're able to, especially with paid advertising, say like, no, nope, Google, this is exactly who I want to target. Go ahead and target them. So it's like, right, right. You know, really have to do that guesswork with um, bringing in new clients. Yes, I love that. And like you said, you're, you have to kind of vet them kind of in a way to see if they fit. And then there's part of you that's like, well, I don't want to say no because my client referred them and, you know, I don't want to, I feel bad. 
<laughs> yeah, and I, I've seen like all the red flags. I'm like, this is not someone that I should take on, but they were a referral from one of my good clients. So I feel like I have to. Do. Right? I know. So it kind of puts you in that awkward situation sometimes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And it never turns out well. Always trust your gut. That's exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That is a big thing. Trust mm-hmm. that intuition. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, so your story, like I said, it really shows how marketing, advertising, all of that can really turn that, you know, a bad event like that around. Um, And so I just, I just love that you were able to turn that around and and it worked out and everything for you. So I would love to hear some of the client success stories that you've had with your clients. I know we shared a little bit about the Italian travel travel agency, which is awesome. Um, But do you have any other um, success stories that you could share with us how you've helped? Absolutely. Yes. And so one of them is actually fits into this perfectly. Um, They are one of my star clients. And so uh, Lindsay and Matt Rain, they own a outdoor construction company. So outdoor remodeling, so backyards and all of that stuff. And they were relying on these unpredictable referrals just from local people, family and friends. And they were like, okay, well, I have to change. I have to do something. So they decided to try Google ads. And she's also a good friend of mine. And obviously I'm a Google ads expert. So she was like, you know, Katie, we've been running these um, smart campaigns for about, you know, I think it was about six months. I would love if you came in and checked on them. And immediately when she said the word smart campaign, I was like, oh no, (laughs) that's not something that, you know, I I have a feeling that, um, and of course I didn't tell this to her face, but I was like, I have a feeling that you might've wasted some money Um, just simply because smart campaigns, of course they sound great. They sound super enticing. It's Google's like, easy way to set up a campaign. So for business owners that don't know what they're doing, um, but when it comes to digital marketing, there's never an easy way out. And that's what you always have to remember. And so smart campaigns, not necessarily saying Google is, you know, misleading or they're trying to be misleading. I think they were really trying to help small businesses when they created these, um, but they just simply don't work because you're not going to know, or Google's not going to know your business as well as you do. And so going back to those demographics again, like I know who my ideal customer is and I can go in and either Google or Facebook and say, okay, my, you know, ideal customer is women in from 25 to 35 year old who are interested in digital marketing or who own a small business. With smart campaigns, you can't do that because you're giving Google all of the control because you might necessarily not know how to do that, but that's going to be something that Google has full control over because they're just trying to make it really easy for you. So that's one of my first things about Google. And I'll get back to the story with my client because I have to diverge a little (laughs) bit. That's okay. I know what you're saying though, like artificial intelligence, it can only take you so far. I mean, it's yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, you know, they had so much on their plate to handle. They're like, I just going to set up the smart campaign. So I went in, looked at the results. I was like, yeah, this is not great. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, set you up with the regular campaign um, and get you up and running. And within the first 12 months of incorporating Google ads into their business, they actually hit uh, $1 million. So that was pretty incredible. And this was strictly through Google ads. They actually did not uh, email marketing. They didn't, re- they had their Instagram, but it was up and coming. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, they had less than a hundred followers. It wasn't something that they focused on, but yeah. that was just solely through Google ads. They hit their first million dollars. And so again, this was something that was really incredible and that they were able to work towards because they put in a lot of work, dedicated their time. Um, but it was something that you know, not out here saying that everyone can hit a million dollars if they start Google ads, but (laughs) if you put in the work and you have the right guidance, that's absolutely possible because, you know, Lindsay and I were able to do that. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, that is amazing. All from Google ads. That is so cool. That is very good. (laughs) Yeah. And so it's just been really great seeing them on their journey because I think it's been about either two or three years now and they're just blowing it out of the water. Like I'll go in and like manage their campaigns um, every few months, but I've taught them along the way of what they can do on their own just to kind of manage it. And Mm -hmm. then I'll come in every few months to just do like a nice revamp do those optimizations that they might not be able to see um, as Google ads experts. And so it's been a really nice way to work with them. Um, And it's, it's been incredible to see how much they've grown in just, especially that first 12 months. (laughs) Right. And see, that's awesome too, that um, like you just said there that you are like, here, I can show you how to do this by yourself. If you'd like, if not, I can hop in and do it. So Mm -hmm. you're kind of like a team, you know, it's like a team effort, not 
you pay me. I'll just, you know, I love that. I've never yes. thought about that, but it, that's a perfect way to explain it. It is a team effort when it comes yeah, to building it really it. is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that must feel really good too. that. You, I mean, you must be able to pat yourself on the back a little bit there too. And be like, that <laughs> yeah. is amazing. I got them to a million dollars. <laughs> exactly. Like this is my, they're my star client, you know? <laughs> yes. That is so cool. But it just fit this conversation so perfectly because like I said, yes. they were strictly working off referrals and wow. he was, you know, working his butt off trying to get everything up and running. And then all of a sudden when Google ads came in and now he's doing some pretty wild <laughs> <laughs> um, projects. Like yeah. I know he's like outdoor backyard is their company, but mm-hmm. one of um, the husband, Matt, he just had a project where he's putting a bar on a roof, <laughs> like a oh. flower. <laughs> <laughs> bar and he was like, yep, I actually got that from Google ads. And it's like nice. this huge project. Um, and I'm like, that's really interesting. But you know, he's yeah. just one of the biggest projects that I've had, obviously, because there's a lot that goes into that. But he was wow. like, and that's solely from Google ads, because this homeowner was trying to search for someone to do it. No one would do it. But then his ad came up and he was like, I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, See? That, yeah. And yeah, really that good. just shows there, right? Someone's searching for something. Yes. And yeah, you have to be in front of them, get in front right. of them. Right. Cause that's one thing I always say. It's like, you could be the best at what you do, whatever it is. You could be the absolute best, have the best service, be the nicest person. But if you're not showing up, I mean, you just don't exist really in the mind of the consumer or the person who's searching. I mean, if they don't know about you, that's it. They just don't know about you. So the competition who's running those ads or whatever is going to get that business. So like, yeah, yeah. And that's the hardest thing. It's like, you can you know, be on Instagram all you want, but when we can blame the algorithm all we want, but it's not right. good for visibility for small businesses yeah. small accounts, unless you're posting all the time, creating reels, doing stories. Since I own my own <laughs> Instagram <laughs> account, I know it's very hard and there's a lot of work that goes into it. So really, yeah, it's, it's really complicated to get yourself out there if you're not focusing your full amount of time on it, especially mm-hmm. when it comes to like SEO, that's right. more than the free paid, the free version of Google ads. Mm-hmm. Even then it could take six to 12 months for you to start showing up near exactly. the top of the results page. So it's just incredible. Um, if you do yeah. spend just even sometimes a little bit of money, it can right. go a very long way. Oh, um, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I work with, um, you know, I did a website for someone and it was like, the website went live and the very next day she's like, I'm not showing up in Google. And I was like, Oh, so I had to explain to her. And then like, that's fine. I don't expect everyone to know all this stuff, but I had to explain to her like, Oh, like that's, you know, through, um, you know, well, it's going to take a while just to, for Google to like index your website and all of that. It's also, you know, when you start doing blog writing, you're going to give them more, to index and, you know, you'll be start showing up in those search results and things like that. So there's a lot that kind of goes on. Like you said, it can take months, you know, to show up. And if someone's not kind of actively monitoring all that and kind of seeing what's working, what's not working, it's, you know, a website can only take you so far. Social media can only take you so far. So you kind of have to have all these elements working together to really get that result, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's the beauty about paid advertising. It's like the minute you put in your credit card, you set up your ad, <laughs> you're live. So it's not exactly like this waiting game with Instagram algorithm or this waiting game with getting your search results higher um, on Google organically. It's like, right. no paid ads, especially on Google alone, paid ads will always be above organic. And that's one thing yeah. I always say, like if my clients do work on SEO too. And I think that's fantastic. Again, having those multiple channels, but they're like, okay, you know, when I get my SEO up to the one or two spot, I can turn off ads. Right. And I'm like, well, no, because ads are <laughs> always going to be above organic search results. Right. So right. You might be one or two um, for SEO organically, but you might be five <laughs> or yeah. six comes down to the, all of the listings, including the ads itself. Exactly. And when was the last time you went to the second page of Google results? Never, (laughs) never. Nobody does that unless you're really desperate. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) And so, yeah, it's just so important to have all of these channels. uh, Yeah. It's constantly working together. 
Exactly. Because I, and I know we talked about this on, on your boot camp that I attended, um, you know, and, and it's why I do, um, I do a lot of organic, but then I also do like the Facebook ads and then, you know, install the Facebook pixel on your website. So it's retargeted. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's like you said, even that works together with Google ads, because if someone is going to search for you on Google and then they see your ad and they go to your website, okay, well now that pixel is like, you know, they've, gone to your website. So now they go to social media and now your ad is going to retarget them there. So it's kind of like, you just are dripping on people all over the internet (laughs) and it keeps you top of mind. Um, because even if they visit your website once they might forget about it, go to someone else. Mm -hmm. Um, but if that ad is retargeting them, perfect. If they Google it again, another day, because they're still thinking about it and your ad, the Google ad pops up, you're still in front of them again. So I feel like just everything needs to work together to really, you know, be effective. Absolutely. And yeah. especially because we're in such an informational driven state right now, mm-hmm. not yeah. everyone purchases off the first time they see a business. Uh, I heard the other day that it takes seven to 20 touch points, uh, depending on how, uh, depending on your pricing before someone makes a decision. So yeah, of yeah, course you might crazy. hit some people that are like, you know, jump the gun and they'll, they'll purchase, but most people need seven to 20 touch points. And, you know, you, they're not going to be searching Google 20 times. They're not going to be saying right. yeah, 20 times and convert. It's like, they might go to Google, see your remark down on Facebook, send up for your email list, get some emails, go back to Google. Like people will take their time exactly. to do their research and why it's so important to use this omni-channel marketing and be on all of oh, these yeah. channels. And you, and reviews, social proof. Yeah. Oh, that's absolutely. a big one too. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Cause one thing I always push to is Google my business. Yes. Having a Google My Business profile, which I believe you have to have that set up to run a Google ad. Is that right? Do you have um, if your location based services, you do need it if you want to have if you actually go on maps. Um, if you go to maps, there are ads on maps now that's new within the last few okay. years. And so you can actually be on Google Maps. Most of the time you might not know this, but you are probably seeing a Google ad. Um, cause Google yeah. does a really good job of making it really hidden. <laughs> and so right, right. I, I heard the other day, um, I was reading or listening to a audio book and he was saying, he typically asks people like, have you seen the Google ad? Surprisingly over 70% of people, he said, ha- said no. And he was like, that's not true. There's <laughs> no way that's not true. true. <laughs> yeah. You just don't think you've seen a good, an ad because they do such a good job of disguising it and making that yeah. name content uh, when you really have. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's a good thing to have. And yeah, like you said, you've definitely seen a Google ad. There's no yeah. way There's There's no, no way, way if you were on the internet and you have not seen an ad. Cause that's right. another thing too. People don't understand. Like Google is not just search, like Google's not right. just Google search engine. So Facebook and Instagram are typically just Facebook and Instagram. Like that's mm-hmm. the only place right now that you can see Facebook and Instagram ads. Yeah. But Google has the Google Display Network, which has over a billion sites on it. So that's where wow. advertisers can buy into this display network and say, hey, um, I want, you know, Google ads to show on my website and they actually can buy into that. And so the Google Display Network is on AOL, it's on Yahoo, it's on your news sites, it's on recipe pages. Yeah. So it's really- when they own YouTube, right? They own yeah, YouTube, YouTube. and yeah, they own YouTube. So that's going to be at a whole other like you can have YouTube ads. And so it's just crazy. And, and I understand why people say, oh, I've never seen a Google ad, but it's if you understand what Google actually encompasses. And yeah. this is what I also like to say, Google is a monopoly. Right, right. <laughs> so it's one of our, you know, monopolies that we just love because they own over 85% of the market share. Wow. And so, you know, no one really thinks about Bing and Yahoo and AOL. And, but so Bing is the only one that doesn't actually buy into Google, but if you're searching on Google ads, you can actually opt into search partners and your ads will show on like Yahoo or AOL. So it's like, that's wow. how big and how much of the market that they own. Wow. <laughs> they have other search engines using their platform. <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah. That is crazy. Wild. Yeah. I actually just saw a statistic the other day that was like, you know, Google, Facebook, um, there was a third one. I can't remember which one, but pretty much all of these combined have more ad revenue than any other form of advertising in the entire world, like combined everything they are top. So, I mean, that's including TV newspaper, obviously newspapers, like we know that's on the way out, like, (laughs) um, you know, uh, you know, print magazines, all of that it's bigger 
by far than all of it. So if you're not kind of partaking in that, it's like, mm -hmm. you know, that's it's where you need to be. Too, the other platforms have been around for ages versus right. Google. I'm as sad as this is, I'm older than Google. <laughs> like, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I hate saying that, but like I am older than Google. And like you just yeah. said, it is one of the big guys, like the amount of growth that they've seen in the last, I think it's 24 years uh, that oh, they've wow. been in business is just crazy. <laughs> yeah, it is really crazy. Everything's digital now. So Absolutely. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, so that is pretty awesome. So thank you for sharing the you know, client <laughs> success stories and all of that. Um, but, and I do want to touch on, and I know we touched on a little bit, but running Google ads is obviously, you know, obviously can produce great results and, and all of that, but it has to be done with a lot of research and thought behind it. Like you said, you don't want to just, just want to jump on those smart campaigns because mm -hmm. you'd be throwing away a lot of money. Um, and, you know, it's not something that should just be done on a whim because um, mm -hmm. they're very technical. Like you've described, they're very technical and require a lot of education experience. And so you're not wasting money targeting those wrong people. Mm -hmm. So could you maybe just kind of touch on the maybe importance of, you know, of that? Like, what is the importance of using, especially as a small business? Because we said that your hard earned money, you don't want to just see it be thrown away. So like, what is the importance there of working with someone who really knows what they're doing can get you those results? Absolutely. And effective. Yeah. Yeah. The biggest thing, and we already touched on this was working with agencies, like not saying all agencies are bad, but if you're going to choose one, do your due diligence and make sure that they have you in the best interest and not, you know, their pockets. And so- right. Working with those agencies, make sure you have account full full control of the account. But on the other side of things was just working with Google ads. If you do want to do it on your own, make sure you do have guidance because that's one of the biggest mistakes I made when I was first learning Google ads. And I see all the time is just blindly trusting Google ads. Um, wow. Google ads is not a charity. We just discussed. It's right. a huge <laughs> billion dollar. I think that's a trillion dollar business. Wow. So yeah, yeah. Like, they don't really care. Like they just care about the money, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and so that's going to be something that I always tell my clients or even just potential clients, like when it comes to Google ads, don't blindly trust them, whether it's not you hire someone to help you work through it, or just simply watching YouTube videos. It gets a little bit harder on YouTube because Google is constantly changing. So there's just so right. much outdated information, but just do some sort of due diligence done to understand what you're putting into Google ads. Um, a great example that I always bring up are the settings. So with Google ads, you know, they have all these fancy automations. So it's like maximize conversions, maximize clicks, um, maximize impression share, which just means show up ahead of your competitors. And so all of that sounds great, but a lot of it are vanity metrics or a lot of it don't take your overall return on ad spend into consideration. So when it comes to maximizing clicks, it's one of their bidding strategies that they really push. I don't care about how many clicks my client <laughs> gets. Like, right? yeah, about, yeah. it's like, I don't care about how many clicks or if they're showing up in front of their competitor or not. Like those are vanity metrics. We wanna look at maximizing conversions. But then even if you understand maximizing conversions, you have to tell Google, okay, $1 means $1. because Google can change your bid and your budget, not your budget. So if you tell Google, I only want to spend hundred dollars a day, like that's, that's what it'll, it'll max out at, but Google will change your bid. So you could, to your business, $1 could be profitable and you could make a killer return on ad spend, but Google has the ability to bump that up to $2, maybe $3 and not tell you and they'll yeah. just and so your money's not going as far yeah your money's not yeah. going as far and so i actually have another great example during the pandemic and this is one of those like this will probably never happen again that a potential <laughs> client came in um and they were debt financial services um and so they came in saying okay we need some help on google ads this was like right when the pandemic was starting to come i think probably in february so it was like on our radar and they started to come in saying, okay, we want to set up some Google ads, get this, get this going. And so within a week of setting up the ads, the pandemic, I think, yeah, because I think the pandemic hit probably early March or that's when everything officially shut down. So that week that everything officially shut down, um, they were spending about 30 to $50 per click, which isn't cheap, but for them, it was profitable because their return on ad spend and their return on investment made sense. Mm -hmm. 
Google had this set up where they were running enhanced cost per click. And this is something I tell everyone to immediately turn off because they had that set up, their 30 to $50 cost per click went up to $900 no. for <laughs> one click. Because of course, when everything shut down, everyone was in a panic. Everyone went to Google saying, okay, I need debt relief. I need debt help. So the search volume was there and the competition was there. So Google was like, okay, we're just going to charge you more. So $900. Luckily I caught that the very first day. Oh, but I wow. Google it and I was like, this is, yeah, I was like, this is ridiculous. And so we need, I was like, we need our money back because this is ridiculous. There's, there's like, we're in a pandemic right now. Like this right. is, must have been an algorithm misfunction. Like there's no way it went up from <laughs> 30 to $900 in a day. And they said, sorry, you have enhanced cost per click on. There's wow. nothing to do. And so that's oh, one of my no. extreme examples, but it shows you like, that's what can happen. And so it might not be three, 30 to $900, but it could be a dollar to $5. And that, wow. huge, that, that is a pretty big jump when it comes into, you know, paying for every single yeah. thing taken out of your pockets. That, that $1 to $5 jump means, you know, maybe five times less impressions, whatever right. it is. Yeah, I cannot imagine perfect. opening that up and seeing that I just paid nine hundred dollars for a click. Yeah. That is yeah. crazy. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I worked with them because it was I, we tried everything that we possibly could, and it was just yeah. one of those. So it was a learning moment for me as well, because this was a brand new account. And of course, no one could have predicted this, but it was one of those things that I was like, I'm getting on the phone with Google. Um, most of the time, an agency probably wouldn't go this far either. And that's another thing. Yeah. That I, so it really comes down to making sure that you do choose someone who has your interests or your business's interests at their at their framework, because right. if not, they're not going to go out of their way to do these things. But of course, I was like, this can't happen. Right. <laughs> so, you know, I, go for like an hour saying like we Aww. need this, back. this is ridiculous and they're like sorry you had enhanced cost per click wow so it's just crazy and so that's one of the things too it's like if if they didn't hire me they probably would not have caught that and they would have been spending nine hundred dollars a day because again like I have it so it notified me so I was like yeah. what's this <laughs> what's wow. going on um and so I was able to catch it that same day but if they had no idea if they don't check on their accounts daily weekly even monthly like it just would have spent and they had a I mean they were spending over fifty thousand dollars a month so like it wow. would have spent that money not a hundred dollars <laughs> yeah oh wow see and that's why it's so important to have someone yeah. like you know, that you outsource to, or that you're working with that can take the time to look at those things and monitor those things. Because, you know, whatever business you're in, you didn't get into that business to be full-time marketer or to be a Mm full-time, you know, ad specialist, or you did it to do what you love. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to have this in the back of your mind, like, oh, I need to check my ads. I need to check that this is working. I need to check that that's working. Just having someone else do that for you, you're able to focus on what you do. And it's actually, you're going to bring in more business that way anyway, because you're focusing on the business. Absolutely. So, oh, they're, uh, they're, they sh- must be so thankful that they had you at that time. Like, oh yeah. my gosh, they're I can't like, imagine. <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah. So, but yeah. So like when I, like I said, when it comes to ads, like I myself help clients with, um, marketing and, and running ads in terms of, um, mm-hmm. you know, Facebook ads, retargeting and all of that. Um, but Google ads is a whole other game. I mean, as you just said on this call today or this podcast today, like it is so intricate. There's so many settings. And like you said, Google's a monopoly. They want to make money. Mm -hmm. Like you said, that $900 switch, (laughs) right. That's why they have, that's why they have the billions, you know? So (laughs) you want to make sure that, you know, that stuff isn't happening to you. So, but if you're, if anyone is interested in doing more law, more online advertising, or, you know, they want to give their business a boost in that way, I would encourage them to reach out to you, Katie. Um, you know, I've, I've been in touch with you long enough that I feel confident, you know, sending people your way and just being on your boot camp. I knew, you know what you're talking about. So mm-hmm. If anyone is interested in reaching out, um, you can find her at katiedoss.com and that's C-A-T-I-D-A-U-S.com. You can also find her on Instagram by the same name at Katie Doss. And I will also have her details in any description um, as well. So you can, can find her, but Katie, I want to thank you so, so, so much for, for sharing that story and sharing all of your success stories with not only your own business, but your clients as well. I think 
it can be really eye opening for a lot of people to show that like, Hey, this stuff isn't just a set it and forget it solution, right? You need someone there to really work with you, be a team and, you know, get you those business results that you're looking for. Yeah. And thank you so much for having me. I mean, this is one of the big things that I love to just talk about because I really hope that whether or not you've made these mistakes and you want to improve from them or learn from them, or just tell you my stories, you don't have to make the same mistakes that I made because (laughs) there's going to be some mistakes that all small businesses are going to have to go through, but hopefully me sharing my story and sharing my information that I have about Google, you can avoid those major mistakes um, and just kind of move on past those and not have to (laughs) go Exactly. Exactly. Because when I myself even dabbled a little bit in Google ads, I was like, "Mm, I'm going to see what Katie has to say. I'm going to jump on this boot camp and (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And and I learned a lot. So, um, so yeah, like I said, if anyone, you know, needs to reach out to her, reach out to me or reach out to Katie and I'm sure we can help you in some way. Yeah. Well, thank you again. Thank you so much. much It was. Thank you. I want to say thank you once again to my guest today, Katie Doss. I hope you found her story inspiring and I hope it encourages you to diversify your online marketing efforts. If you are interested in learning more about Google ads or possibly working with Katie, I will have all of her information in the description of this podcast. And once again, I'm Lindsay Berta, founder of Berta Marketing, a marketing agency designed specifically for small business owners where I handle all of your marketing so you can focus on what you love. For more small business marketing tips, subscribe to this podcast or find me online at bertamarketing.com. Thanks for listening.